The U.S. aircraft carriers are finally becoming the most powerful vessels in the world. This country recently unveiled a game-changing weapon, an incredibly powerful laser carrier that is designed to take on the growing hypersonic missile threats with their unprecedented firepower and advanced technology. How is this new laser carrier better than the regular missile defense system? How effective are they against China's hypersonic missiles? Join us as we unveil the capabilities of the new powerful laser system that the United States recently unveiled. Aircraft carriers first proved their importance during the Second World War. When Japan attacked Pearl Harbor using planes launched from carriers on December 7, 1941, it showed how powerful these ships could be. After that, aircraft carriers became the most important warships. They were key in major sea battles in the Pacific, like the battles at Midway, the Coral Sea, and Leyte Gulf. These floating air bases have been the core of the U.S. Navy's offensive power for years. Today, they're bigger and more advanced than ever, but also more vulnerable to the growing number of America's enemies, especially China's Navy, the People's Liberation Army Navy. As a result, many are questioning whether the massive cost of building and maintaining them is still justified. This situation gets even worse. The Chinese military has created targets shaped like an American aircraft carrier and other U.S. warships in the Taklamakan Desert based on satellite photos shared by Maxar with USNI News. The targets include a full-sized outline of a U.S. carrier and two Arleigh Burke-class destroyers built in central China's Rukyang region. This area is near a place China used in 2013 to test its DF-21D anti-ship missiles, known as carrier killers. The new range suggests that China is still focused on developing weapons to target U.S. Navy ships, with this site being more advanced than a Rin's similar target in the Persian Gulf. The carrier target appears to be a flat surface without key features like the island, aircraft lifts, or weapons, according to Maxer images. On radar, the carrier's outline is clearly visible, standing out from the desert like a target, as shown in images from Capella Space. There are two more carrier-shaped targets without metal, but their outlines still show they represent carriers. Other warship targets are more detailed, with many upright poles that could be used for instruments or radar reflectors to imitate the ship's structure. The facility also has a large rail system, and an image from October 9 showed a 75-meter-long target with advanced equipment on a 6-meter-wide rail. The area has been mainly used for ballistic missile testing, according to a review of Maxer images by All Source Analysis, a geospatial intelligence company that identified the site with satellite imagery. The mock-ups of likely U.S. warships, some on rails and movable, might be used to test target detection and tracking, though no signs of weapon impacts were seen nearby. The detailed setup, including sensors around the targets, suggests the area could be used for different purposes over time. Satellite images show the carrier target was first built between March and April 2019, rebuilt a few times, and mostly taken apart by December 2019. The site became active again in late September this year, with the structure nearly finished by early October. China has several anti-ship ballistic missile programs managed by the People's Liberation Army Rocket Force. The land-based DF-21D missile can hit targets over 800 nautical miles away and has a maneuverable warhead to strike ships. The larger DF-26 has a range of about 2,000 nautical miles. According to a Pentagon report, the Chinese military fired six DF-21D missiles into the South China Sea, north of the Spratly Islands, on July 2019. China is believed to be developing a longer-range anti-ship missile that appeared in 2016. The DF-26 can quickly switch between conventional and nuclear warheads, and can carry out precise strikes on land or at sea in areas like the Western Pacific, Indian Ocean, and South China Sea. In 2020, China tested these missiles against a moving target in the South China Sea, but has not officially confirmed it. China is also developing a program to equip its Navy's H-6 bombers with a large anti-ship missile that was revealed in 2018. This missile, called the CHSX-13, could be the largest air-launched missile and might carry a hypersonic warhead. Another platform for launching anti-ship missiles could be China's new Type 055 Renhai-class large destroyer, which the Pentagon report says will be able to carry such missiles. This isn't the first time China has built a carrier target in the desert. Since 2003, a large concrete pad the size of a carrier 
has been used as a target at the Shuangchengzi missile test range, regularly hit and repaired. The newer site in the Taklamakan Desert, 600 miles away, is more advanced, with ship targets that better resemble real vessels. There are still questions about which weapons will be tested at the new facility, but the advanced setup shows that the Chinese military is continuing to develop ways to reduce the effectiveness of U.S. naval forces near China, especially focusing on U.S. aircraft carriers. The Pentagon report from last week states that one of the main goals of China's rocket force is to keep U.S. carriers under threat from anti-ship ballistic missiles across the Western Pacific. To safeguard its extremely important warship, the USS Gerald R. Ford, the U.S. Navy is pulling out all the stops, arming it with the most powerful laser weapon ever developed. The USS Gerald R. Ford isn't just any ship. It is a nuclear-powered vessel that boasts of two nuclear reactors, each weighing over a thousand tons. These reactors endow the ship with exceptional longevity, giving it the potential to power an entire city without interruption. Placed within its core are its two Bechtel A1B nuclear reactors, which generates about 700 megawatts of power, equivalent to an astounding 952,000 horsepower, or nearly 2 million horsepower through its pair of colossal electric motors. Each motor is equivalent in size to four pickup trucks stacked together, generating power equivalent to 1.5 million horsepower. This floating vessel carries over 60 fighter jets, support, and tactical aircraft, with room for up to 90. Towering 25 stories above the water and weighing 97,000 tons, which is 32,000 tons heavier than the biggest battleships of World War II, it's a true behemoth. Amongst all the aircraft carriers in the world, the USS Gerald R. Ford claims the title of the largest aircraft carrier, enabling it to support various aircraft, helicopters, and UAVs, including the most sophisticated and advanced fifth-generation fighter jets. Mounted on this aircraft carrier is a Mark 15 Phalanx close-in weapon system, an unmistakable symbol of excellence within anti-aircraft artillery systems. Its illustrious reputation is well-earned, as it proudly boasts a remarkable rate of fire, capable of discharging an astounding 4,500 rounds per minute and an initial projectile velocity reaching an impressive 3,600 feet per second. In inoffensive engagements, the phalanx orchestrates a relentless ballet of projectiles, evoking the precision and swiftness of a laser-like performance. Notably, the USS Gerald R. Ford has a forward-looking weapon system, Lockheed Martin's Laws Shipboard Laser System. This state-of-the-art system draws formidable power from the aircraft carrier's nuclear reactor enabling a sustained offensive against hostile aircraft and missiles at a substantial distance of three miles. The laser's devastating potency is sufficient to hinder aircraft electronics or obliterate projectiles approaching the USS Gerald R. Ford. Its massive five-acre flight deck and cutting-edge technology are designed to keep it dominating the seas well into the 2050s and beyond. However, due to its immense size, the carrier is incapable of nimbly skimming across the water like a race car. The ship has almost three times more power than America's current supercarriers, producing about 300 megawatts of electricity, according to the Navy. Seeing it on the water is like watching a block of New York City moving at 34 miles per hour. However, new missiles from China, some of which can travel faster than five times the speed of sound, might make the USS Ford and the Navy's Pacific Fleet outdated. A serious report from Congress, which was updated in August 2022, has raised concerns about whether Navy ships can survive in combat against opponents like China, who have many drones and advanced missiles. Even though Russia also has hypersonic weapons, the Navy is more concerned about China. In the last decade, China has quickly grown its Navy and developed many anti-ship weapons, including missiles that can move faster than 10 times the speed of sound. China openly states these weapons are meant to stop American ships and one of their test sites even has life-size models of U.S. aircraft carriers for practice. The USS Ford and similar ships have defenses against missiles, but these said defenses are not strong enough to fully protect them in a long fight against China's newest and quite advanced weapons. To stay in control of the Pacific and keep its ships safe, the Navy is investing heavily in a technology that has been hard to develop. Lasers. Lasers have exciting benefits. Not only are they powered by large energy sources like the Ford's nuclear reactors, they can also fire at the speed of light, 
which makes them a good match for hypersonic weapons. They can also be reloaded quickly to fight off large numbers of drones, and since they don't need ammo, ships would have almost endless firepower. In 2021, the Biden administration created a Pentagon task force to assess the threat from China's fast-growing Navy. A year later, based on what the task force found, the Defense Department identified China as America's main strategic rival. China now has over 770 military vessels, more than double the U.S. fleet, and most of them are focused in the Pacific, while the United States splits its fleet between the Atlantic and Pacific. China's hypersonic weapons aren't the only danger. Carrier commanders have long known that large numbers of anti-ship cruise missiles are also a big threat. These missiles can overwhelm a ship's defenses, and swarms of cheap, long-range suicide drones could just as easily damage a carrier group. The Navy's problem is clear. Its largest carriers and most heavily armed destroyers aren't prepared to handle large numbers of airborne attackers. Right now, the USS Gerald R. Ford sails with a carrier strike group, a fleet of 10 or more cruisers, destroyers, and frigates, sometimes joined by a submarine or two. At least two of these ships, usually Arleigh Burke-class guided missile destroyers, focus on air defense. They use powerful radars to detect threats more than 200 miles away and are equipped with surface-to-air missiles and Phalanx CIWs. The Phalanx system uses radar-guided 20mm six-barrel Gatling guns that fire 4,500 rounds per minute, similar to the cannons on American fighter jets like the F-16. A carrier strike group has enough equipment to intercept dozens of missiles from up to 200 miles away. However, it becomes vulnerable once it runs out of interceptors, which need to be stored and replaced after a battle. Some supplies can be refilled at sea, but missiles cannot be refilled at sea. They have to be refueled at a port. The Pentagon calls this a depth of magazine issue, meaning enemies could take advantage by overwhelming the defenses with lots of attacks. The Pentagon believes the best way to defend against swarming drones is with lasers. Unlike the lasers in Star Wars, real laser beams don't explode on impact, but instead produce intense heat. At lower power, they can mess up a drone's sensors, and at a higher power, they can burn through it. Essentially, lasers turn energy into ammo. With nuclear reactors like those on the USS Ford, lasers could potentially fire thousands or even tens of thousands of times to stop incoming attacks. Because laser beams travel at the speed of light, they can follow and target fast-moving weapons, like China's hypersonic DFZF, better than traditional missiles. Gunners wouldn't need to predict where the target will be like they do now. Lasers are also much cheaper. The Congressional Research Service estimates that firing a high-powered laser costs between $1 and $10, much less than the millions it costs for defensive missiles. In 2014, the Navy installed the first laser on a ship for sea trials. Mounted forward on the deck of the amphibious transport ship USS Ponce, the 33-kilowatt SEQ-3 laser weapon system had a short, round, white-painted firing tube with two smaller tubes for sensors resting on its shoulders. To an untrained eye, it looked like an amateur astronomer's telescope, but even this early, low-power version delivered impressive firepower. A second, more powerful laser began testing in 2019. In August 2022, the Navy installed its first permanent laser on a destroyer, the Arleigh Burke-class Preble. The weapon developed by Lockheed Martin has a 60-kilowatt output and is integrated with the ship's advanced Aegis radar and weapons control system. The Navy calls it Helios, or High Energy Laser, with integrated optical dazzler and surveillance system. Later versions could be even more powerful. The Navy received its first high energy laser system, called Helios, from Lockheed Martin in the third quarter of fiscal year of 2022, and it is currently being installed on an Arleigh Burke class destroyer that is getting upgrades, according to a company spokesperson. Rick Cordero, a vice president at Lockheed Martin, said that Helios improves the ship's ability to defend against future threats and provides extra protection for sailors. He emphasized that the system is designed to meet the Navy's specific needs and can be upgraded over time. Helios is part of the Navy's larger plan to increase its use of laser weapons. The Navy requested about $35 million for this group of systems in its 2023 budget, and the first system is expected to be used at sea that year. The weapon system helps fill gaps in defending against surface threats and surveillance, and can destroy drones and small attack boats. This technology is a big improvement over current systems, such as surface-to-air missiles and Gatling guns, 
which need ammunition and are expensive to use against cheap drones, according to an August report from the Congressional Research Service. Lockheed Martin thinks the weapon could eventually reach 150 kilowatts, but even at that level, it will be most useful against drones and small boats. To stop a wave of cruise missiles or a hypersonic weapon moving at speeds of Mach 5 or faster, the Navy will need a much more powerful laser. The Navy estimates that at least a 300 kilowatts laser is needed to defeat cruise missiles. This is because these missiles, besides being large and fast, have heat-resistant nose cones made from materials like pyrolytic graphite or ceramics, designed to handle the extreme heat of supersonic flight, which can go over 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Lasers will need to burn through these tough materials quickly. They also must be strong enough to overcome atmospheric interference and accurately hit a missile moving at one mile per second to destroy it. A new solution may be coming soon. The Navy plans to test a 300 kilowatts laser called Hellcap or High Energy Laser Counter ASCM program later this year. A 2020 photo behind Admiral Michael Gilday suggests that Hellcap will be based on the Navy's current Odin system, which is already on some destroyers. If the test is successful, Hellcap would be the Navy's first laser able to shoot down incoming anti-ship cruise missiles. However, even Hellcap won't be powerful enough to stop hypersonic missiles traveling up to Mach 10. These missiles can handle temperatures over 1,700 degrees Fahrenheit. The Pentagon estimates it might take a one megawatt laser, over three times stronger than Hellcap to take them down. Luckily, megawatt class lasers could be coming soon. The Navy gave Northrop Grumman a contract to develop such a laser. And in July, 2022, the company finished a design for a high energy laser that combines several beams into one. Northrop will first build a 300 kilowatt prototype, but the technology could eventually reach one megawatt. For the Pentagon, this technology is urgently needed as billions are invested in aircraft carriers. With China's anti-ship weapons getting better fast, ships like the Ford are more vulnerable than they've been in decades. The future of the US Navy might depend on stopping a single hypersonic missile, but the Navy hopes its new laser systems will be able to destroy these missiles at a much lower cost. The United Kingdom is also working on a laser system known as the Dragonfire. It was first shown to the public in 2007 at the Defense and Security Equipment International Conference in London. It is being developed by UK Dragonfire, a group made up of MBDA UK, Leonardo UK, Chinetti Q, and the Defense Science and Technology Laboratory. A production version is expected to be used on Royal Navy ships by 2027. Dragonfire uses advanced technology developed in the UK to create a powerful laser beam with better performance, faster reaction times, and longer range. It uses many glass fibers, but the full details are secret. The laser system includes a camera and a weaker laser for tracking, all mounted on a rotating platform. The laser has about 50 kilowatts power and is meant to protect land and sea targets from missiles and mortar attacks. It might be powered by a new flywheel energy storage system being developed by the UK and the US. The exact range of the laser is classified, but each shot costs just 50 euros. The UK plans to use these high-energy lasers on future Navy ships, Army vehicles, and Air Force fighter jets, including the BAE Systems Tempest, and will test them on a Type 23 frigate and a Wolfhound vehicle. Thanks for watching. While you are still here, click on the link on your screen to check out another of our videos. See you there.